Hello, my name is Samantha Stockdale and I am one of the admission counselors with Lewis and Clark College. I work with students in the state of Oregon outside of the Portland Tri-County area. And so if you ever have any questions, all you have to do is reach out to me. My information can be found on our staff page. I am always available via email or via phone call as well. But moving on, today we'll be talking to you about the academics and the liberal arts experience at Lewis and Clark, a little bit about our community and student life on campus, exploring the Pacific Northwest and the rest of the world outside of just Lewis and Clark, and a little bit about our application process and timeline, as well as financial aid opportunities. So first up, I'm going to speak with you all a little bit about the academics and the liberal arts at Lewis and Clark. As you'll see, some quick facts about the institution as you would expect with a small school experience, our undergraduate enrollment is just about 2,000. The average class size is about 17. That being said, the largest class you'll probably partake in at Lewis and Clark will be just about 30, and the smallest can be about five students. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. We offer 29 different majors and 30 minors. Again, those are just some quick facts. As you can tell, it really is representative of the liberal arts experience, what you expect at a liberal arts college. You know, our professors have open door policies. They reach out to students, you know, when it comes to needing a dog sitter or a babysitter as well. All research and internship opportunities are available specifically for our undergrad students. All classes are taught by professors too. When it comes to the academic community at Lewis and Clark, it's really focused on each individual student and making sure that they can succeed to the utmost of their abilities. And to help us achieve that goal, we have our third model structure to our academics. So during your time at Lewis and Clark, a third of your classes will be dedicated to general education requirements, making sure you get a really strong breadth of knowledge and not stuck in just one specific department. The next third is dedicated specifically to your major and mastering the skills needed in your major to go on into the professional world in whatever passion you decide to pursue. And the final third is completely elective. A lot of students end up using this third of electives to receive a um, double major. Um, a lot of them use it to go after maybe a couple minors and some students just take classes that they're interested in that have no context in comparison to what they're doing for a degree. I spoke briefly about research opportunities on campus. As I mentioned, all available for our undergraduate students. You're not competing with graduate students to work in any of the research opportunities on campus or any of the resources we have off campus as well. We also offer a variety of pre-professional programs and six annual symposia that our students run, which are basically these really incredible traditional academic conferences that are run by students with different categories in mind. And so these different symposia have different topics year to year where students present not only to the general community at Lewis and Clark, but they're also accessible by the public as well. They're a huge deal on our campus in the city of Portland. The last piece to academics that I wanna to touch on briefly is our four, five, six commitment. This is a dedication we have to our students to make sure that they are succeeding at Lewis and Clark throughout their time here. You know, it's not, just when you've set foot on campus, do we want you to be prepared? We want you prepped for every moment of your life and time at Lewis and Clark. And that starts with the four of our commitment. The four is basically a statement by the institution that students at the undergraduate level, as long as you follow the rules and regulations set forth by your academic advisors, as well as the course catalog we provide, if something per prohibits you from being able to graduate Lewis and Clark in four years, we will cover that additional semester and additional class, class costs for you. The five and six of those commitments are dedicated to our graduate program in teaching where students can receive their bachelor's degree, their MA and teachings license in five years. And the six 
is dedicated to our law school where students can get their bachelor's and JD degree at the law school in six years. So there are accelerated tracks. The four, again, specifically relates to the undergrad commitment. The five is related to students interested in education, looking to get their teachings license and graduate in five years. And the six is those looking to go into law to graduate with all of the necessary things they need to practice in six years rather than the standard seven. Next, I want to share a little bit with you about the six-month post-graduation statistics. As you can tell, our students are very active once they graduate. 82% go straight into the workforce, 12 choose to continue their education. We have a strong uh, roughly 3% that end up volunteering, um, whether it's with AmeriCorps or Peace Corps. We have a lot of students that actually end up doing those volunteer opportunities once they graduate. And then the other percentage is just a slim group that are still looking. Again, this is just a six month post-graduation statistic as well. And so as you can see, most of our students are taken care of. They have a pathway when they graduate and they know what they want for their future. Transitioning a little bit, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the community at Lewis and Clark. This is by far one of my favorite things to talk about when I talk with prospective students about Lewis and Clark. The community on top of our little hill in Portland is pretty unique. Um, as you can see, um, we have 47 U.S. states represented. Over 30% of our students do identify as students of color with a variety of nationalities mixed in there. Um, we have a pretty strong presence of the international students on our campus for just a school of 2,000 students um, and kind of closely related to that our students are obviously involved in a lot of different activities. Um, we are a division three athletics organization and what that means is while we do not offer athletic scholarships to students we do have a strong athletic basis on campus if that is something students are looking for. That being said, you are a student athlete and so your academics will come first. Um, athletics at the Division three level and at Lewis and Clark is for students who are passionate about their sport and want to continue playing at college but understand that a rigorous education and going after academics in that sort of realm is just as important if not more so. We do not offer any sororities or fraternities on campus, but we do have over 110 student-led clubs and organizations for students to get involved in. The clubs on campus are really unique. You, it, creating a club is one of the easiest things you can do if you do not find a club related to something you are interested in. But you know, we have things on campus ranging from a board games club to a gardening club. Um, one of our most popular clubs is probably our fire spinning club. And so uh, whatever you're looking to branch out into or if there's passions you wanna bring with you in college, that is definitely something you can do at Lewis and Clark. We also have a variety of affinity groups on campus as well. Those are all housed and kind of operated in conjunction with our Office of Inclusion and Multicultural Engagement, or as we like to call it, IME. IME is a great resource for students who are looking to get involved in those things like affinity clubs and find you know, support on campus and students like them as well that they can identify with. IME is also a great resource for first gen students and other students who feel like they might need additional help or just additional support during their time at Lewis and Clark. Next, I wanted to share a couple photos instead of just talking at you with a bunch of words on a slide so you can see a little bit of what our community is like on campus. This is a picture of our Pio Fair where all the student-led clubs and organizations gather at the beginning of each year. This picture, and for the most part, all of these pictures were taken before COVID, and so that is why there is not social distancing and a lack of face masks. This year, Pio Fair was hosted online and virtually, but as you can tell, there's a variety of what things students can get involved in and ways to get involved too. This is held at the beginning of every year for students to take advantage of. That way you can start finding those clubs you knew you wanted to be a part of before you got to college, but also find spaces and things to get involved in you might not have thought of before. 
again, some more pictures, as you can tell, um, athletics is well supported too on campus. It is something we want our students to take pride in, you know, go out wearing that orange and black and support the Pio uh, mascot as well. This is just one of the daily activities students kind of do from time to time on campus. Um, this is pretty common in a standard school year to see kids out doing things like tie dyeing, playing capture the flag at night. Um, there's just a ton of variety for what students can do. This is a picture of what we call our sun tan and sunburn events. And it's a combination of local bands and bands from our student created by students at Lewis and Clark. Um, performing with actual sponsored artists that Lewis and Clark has paid to come perform for our students. And so as you can tell, a lot of variety of things you can get involved in depending on your interests, um, but there's always something to do on campus at Lewis and Clark too. So next what I want to talk to you about is off campus a little bit, exploring. Exploration is a huge part of who we are at Lewis and Clark. Next, after this, I'll be diving into study abroad a little bit more specifically and other options. But first, we like to focus a little bit on the Pacific Northwest and this beautiful of the area, beautiful area of the country we're in. About 90% of our students do come from out of state. And so this is a new experience for a lot of the students who come to Lewis and Clark. And so the unique thing about our campus is we're kind of perfectly located in the area where you can take advantage of a ton of opportunities. You know, we're five minutes away from a state park. It's very walkable from campus, but it's just a 50 mile drive to the Cascade Mountains, 80 miles to the Pacific Ocean. And as you can tell in the state of Oregon, um, there's a ton of outdoor activities and spaces to take advantage of between state parks and national parks as well. College Outdoors is a really good resource for students looking to adventure during the school year. College Outdoors is a program instituted by the institution that allows students to go out and do exactly that. We offer trips every semester that range from rock climbing trips to backpacking trips. You can go kayaking or learn how to surf on um, skiing and snowboarding in the winter. All of those types of trips and resources are available to you. And whether you're an expert at it or it'll be your first time, you'll be welcome to go. There are advisors along the trip who can help you if this is a new adventure and something new you want to try. But if say, for example, these are things you've been doing maybe your whole life, you're pretty good at skiing. Um, we have what we call our Sequoia Warehouse, where instead of you know going through the process of going on this trip with a bunch of people, if you just wanted to go out to the mountain for a day or a weekend, you can actually rent gear from the Sequoia Warehouse and go up there to adventure, go skiing as long as you want. Um, the warehouse is massive. It's about the size of an entire gym and it's filled to the brim with kayaks and hiking boots and water bottles and compasses. The main joke in the College Outdoors office is you can show up in your pajamas and they will outfit you for a weekend trip or backpacking three-day trip right on the spot. And so uh, while your time in the classroom is very important and we want you to be involved academically and be absolutely prepared for the, your future, there's a lot of components that go into prepping for your future. And we believe exploration, going out and experiencing the world is part of that, which is why we want students to take advantage of something like this that we have for them on campus. Taking things a step further, exploring the world. So Lewis and Clark is a huge advocate for global exploration. About 60% of our students do participate in some form of overseas and off-campus study program. Studying abroad has been something we've been doing for over 60 years and it's a huge passion we have on campus. To put it in perspective, the national average is about a third of that 60%. And so at the standard college ex experience, only about 20% of students will be studying abroad. It's considered much more of a tradition at Lewis and Clark than an opportunity for students to take advantage of. And so, as you can see, programs are hosted on six different continents. Um, the one we're missing is the Arctic. Uh, we currently do not send students to the Arctic, but if, you know, a student was to propose a need for that, it could be something that is considered. And so that's something that's pretty unique about Lewis and Clark is 
students have the opportunity and the autonomy to voice their concerns and their opinions and what they need or think they need out of their college experience. And so if for some reason you have a reason to go to the Arctic and you think other students might as well, perhaps that can change into seven continents instead of six. So uh, there's a couple things I want to mention about studying abroad specifically at Lewis and Clark that make it a little bit unique. The first is that we offer over 40 programs um, yearly. The thing that's really unique about these programs that are instituted by Lewis and Clark is depending on the type of experience you want, there are three different options you can choose from. We have departmental specific study abroad opportunities where various departments on campus actually host study abroad opportunities for their students. And so if you're a bio major, you can study abroad in Africa or in Australia, if that's something you're interested in and really do a deep dive into biology. Um, our political science department goes to Washington DC sometimes and uh, has some unique opportunities to sit on, on Supreme Court case hearings and so on. Um, and that's kind of what department study abroad looks like. We do offer language intensive study abroad opportunities as well. Language intensive is just exactly as it sounds. Usually students will be sent to one of our sister schools in another country, be a part of an English immersion program where for the most part they will be speaking the language of the native area and region, but um, it's kind of how I would describe the standard and typical Hollywood movie uh, study abroad experience where, you know, you go to France and go to a huge university in France and spend your time getting used to what that experience is like and the academic curriculum is like in a French speaking country. The third option is our regional area study programs. And these are the programs we define as immersive experiences. They're not your typical study abroad experience, to say the least. Most students will go abroad with about 10 or 15 other students and one or two professors. You will start in a city within a specific region, but you will spend that entire semester of year traveling the entire region. And so at some point you will be in cities, other times you will be in small farm towns or agricultural areas or local tribes, depending on what part of the world you're in. And you will be learning about the culture and the ethics of that area and region and how Western civilization has influenced their culture in comparison to Western culture. The great thing about all of these programs too, no matter what pathway you pick, is that credits are pre-approved for all the, sem the entire semester or the year, and so you never have to worry about not having enough credits or not making your credits for the semester, and all financial aid will transfer over. And so you're metaphorically picking Lewis and Clark up and placing it in another area for either a semester or a year, and I think that's part of the reasons why so many of our students do study abroad at Lewis and Clark is it is accessible for all students. The only thing you have to kind of work out the logistics for yourself is how you're going to get there, whether it's going to be via flight, when you're going to leave, and when you're going to arrive, making sure all of that aligns. Um, but we do have additional scholarships for the flight cost as well or travel costs to students can apply for before they go abroad. So next, what I have for you is a few pictures taken from one of our current students uh, from his trip to Tanzania, uh, just to kind of highlight and show, you know, it's not about just going abroad and being a classroom. Um, this is on one of those biology specific departmental abroads, but there as you can tell, is a lot of immersive elements to it too. You know, getting involved with the local community, spending time with the local wildlife. This is by far my favorite picture Ben took on his trip. Um, but, you know, they also did things like climb the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. And so uh, these experiences are so valuable um, to your growth in this time when you're in college. And this is what we want you to take advantage of and for you to utilize during your time at Lewis and Clark. So transition next is going to be a little bit about a first year application process. First and foremost, all you have to do is apply online to us using the Common App. There is no application fee. Um, be sure to check that box if you do have a fee waiver um, for all school you apply to just in case, but you do not have to worry about a fee specifically at Lewis and Clark. 
We do have a few pieces of required material we need for you to submit to us with your application. The first is obviously a official high school transcript and a secondary school report from your school counselor, one teacher recommendation of your choosing, and then we do require you to submit an essay and a short answer as well. This is a piece of advice I give all students who apply to Lewis and Clark. Um, our short answer is gonna ask you basically, you know, why are you interested in Lewis and Clark? How do you see yourself on campus? Um, a lot of colleges tend to ask this question. The number one we, mistake we see on applications is students filling out the short answer, telling us about how excited they are to be on campus and the things they want to do, um, but they forget to change the name of the college in their answer. You know, we get it, you're applying to a variety of different colleges, a lot for the same reasons. You've chosen your list of colleges to apply to very specifically, and a lot of us probably have a ton of things in common. But make sure you change the name of the institution in your short answer when you are applying, because that is the number one mistake I see students commit every year. We do recommend students do participate in an admissions interview at Lewis and Clark as well. It is not required. Basically, this year with the admissions interview, we've realized it's very valuable for us to get a sense of what you're currently going through. Um, due to COVID-19 and the pandemic, uh, what a lot of high schools have changed the ways they've approached things. Some schools have had to drop AP courses. Some students have completely redone their system. And hearing from you about what you're going through, the highs and lows can really help us prepare when we read your application. During your application review process, it, we do what's called a holistic review. And so uh, for students in the state of Oregon, for example, outside of Portland, I will be the counselor reading your application first. And me having an interview with you or you having an interview with one of my colleagues on campus will help me look over these little things like say, for example, if your AP Spanish class was canceled, then that doesn't have to be something that's gonna affect my outlook on your application neg negatively and can be overlooked. The last piece that is optional is whether or not you want to apply with by submitting your SAT and ACT scores or by going test optional. We are a fully test optional institution. We've been test optional for over 30 years, but again, with the current situation of the world, we understand that it's been difficult for some students to schedule being able to take these tests. And so whether you are not satisfied with your test score, you don't believe in standardized testing, or it's just basically been impossible for you to schedule a test, you do not have to send in a test score. We will overlook that piece. But if you did take a test, you're proud of where your score is at, and that's something you want us to consider too in conjunction with your GPA. That is something we would love to see and love to have as a additional piece on your application as well. Closely related to the application process is the application deadlines. And so this year, the deadlines for Lewis and Clark for early decision and early action are November 1st. Um, these two are named specifically to confuse you, I believe. Um, the big difference is the binding and non-binding element to early decision and early action applications. So with early decision, that's basically a statement that you understand that if you are accepted by Lewis and Clark, this is the place you will go. It is the institution for you. You don't want to look at anyone, look at anywhere else, and uh, this is the one place you want to be. You do have to sign a contract to state this. Um, it binds you to attending our university if you do accept our decision. Uh, but closely related to that is early action, which is the non-binding component to our November 1st deadline. Students who apply during early action tend to be students who are very proud of where their GPA is currently at after their junior year. They feel confident about the status of their application, how it currently stands, and maybe looking for a little bit more time to consider their opportunity or options and the different opportunities at various institutions. Um, they may need to work out financial aid a little bit longer than other students. And so those are the students that end up usually going the early action route. The next deadline is January 15th, which is for our regular decision students. 
The students who usually apply with regular decision, which is non-binding, just like early action, um, usually do so because they want their first semester grades of their senior year to be considered with their application. And so students who believe it's more important those grades are there for when they apply versus wanting more time to say work out financial aid, for example, tend to go that regular decision route. Um, the reason we offer our, these three different options is because it allows us as admission counselors to work with students uniquely and specifically based on where they're at in their college search. You know, early decision students, we understand they've made their choice. This is the place for them. Um, they might need a little bit of additional support and stuff and conversation and obviously we're always wanting to talk to you. I love talking to the students in my territory, um, but they're pretty set in mind on where they're at for their college search. Early action students, um, you know, their academics are strong, they're feeling pre ready and prepared to go through this application process, but might need some additional assistance through the rest of their process after their application period. Regular decision students, very similar to early action, but they may, may need additional assistance through the application process. And that is something we're available to help for as well. You know, if you don't know whether you should go test optional or submit your test scores, go ahead and reach out to me. I am happy to advise any student on those matters. And then of course is transfer applications. These are very unique in comparison to the other three. They're evaluated on a rolling basis and a rolling admissions process. And so um, students who are interested in transferring uh, should reach out to transfer at lclark.edu for more information. But for the most part, everything is done for transfers on a rolling basis. The last and final thing I want to speak with you about is the financial aid opportunities at Lewis and Clark. So first and foremost, all students are considered for merit-based aid regardless of their need. All students need to do to be considered for aid is to apply to Lewis and Clark. There's no additional application process for the merit-based aid consideration. 93% um, of our students do receive some form of financial assistance before their arrival on campus. Um, which can look like a variety of different things outside of just merit scholarships. Um, another thing would be performance-based scholarships. We do have performance scholarships offered in music and speech and debate. Um, information about those can be found online on our financial aid website, on the scholarships page, or on the pages specific to music and speech and debate. We also offer Lewis and Clark grants, which are need-based, and so, Grants are basically another form of scholarship, and so there's no loan component. You don't have to pay these back. All you need to apply for need-based aid from Lewis and Clark is to turn in your FAFSA. The FAFSA is required by the application deadline, so for students who apply early decision and early action, we ask you to get the FAFSA in by November 1st, and those for regular decision to get their FAFSA in by January 15th. We understand that there are situations where the FAFSA might act not accurately represent the current situation at home. We do have financial aid advisors as well for each of our students that are more than happy to work with students and get things settled. That way, the financial aid package can best support you to our abilities that we and, and make sure we can close the gap in whatever situation you are having financially as well. So Lewis and Clark can be an affordable option for you. When you send them the FAFSA, you also will be considered for unsubsidized subs, and subsidized loans. It is entirely up to you if you choose to take these out. If you are a family who is considering loans, we do highly recommend you take out these unsubsidized and subsidized loans first. They have low interest rates and are of great value to students. Um, some students may also be offered work study as well, which is a final opportunity that really builds out the financial aid package at Lewis and Clark. There's a variety of work study opportunities for students on campus, both federal and non-federal. And so the nice part about these jobs in the work study is it can be up to an additional $3,000 per year 
and the jobs are framed around the students' academics. And so it won't be too much of an extra strain or stressor on your experience at Lewis and Clark. The jobs are designed to work with your schedule. So that is the last little bit I had to share with you about Lewis and Clark. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me drone on for a little bit. But if you have any questions or want any additional information, you can always email us at admissions at lclark.edu. Or if you want a student's perspective or have questions for our current students, you can email askastudent at lclark.edu. And also, please be sure to check out our additional virtual content on our virtual visit page at go.lclark.edu slash virtual visit. We are also offering limited in-person visits at the moment. Um, granted, things can always change over the next coming months, so be sure to check that website for what we are currently offering and other opportunities we have planned for the near future. Thank you all so much. If you would ever like to get in contact with me as well, you can always find my information on our staff directory page for the admissions office. Thank you.